Good morning, everybody. Move this, adjust this a little bit. I have a new background today. Good morning. Hi everyone, it's Trisha Roberts here this morning coming uh, to you not from my living room or dining room but from my mother-in-law Lori's craft room. I'm going to give you a little tour here. She does a beautiful job. This is her craft room. She's letting me borrow it today. Here's my computer. <laughs> so we're getting it ready i'm going to give it just a minute or two for a few people to hop on and then we'll get started today i'm so excited to have you join me i'm going to just double check to make sure our live video is working okay awesome so um, today I'm coming to you with some pressed flower crafts that we'll be doing today. I'm excited. Hi Donna, good morning. Um, we are experiencing, uh, I think, quite a downpour of effects after all the rain we had this past week, but hopefully that means more flowers will be in bloom. It'll be fun to get outside once it's dried up a little bit and uh, we can make some really, really beautiful pieces for our home to decorate for spring. So before we get started, I wanna just give you an update about what's happening at the PAC. Uh, we do have some summer programming that I'm excited about. Um, like everything, you know, we may not be able to meet in person this summer. However, we are working really hard at getting everything ready to go to be fully online if we have to. So if you're interested in taking a class, hi Mel, <laughs> if you're interested in taking a class, you know, feel free to sign up. We'll be running it no matter what, whether that's in person if we're allowed to be and if it's safe for us to be in person or we'll do it all virtual. I know virtual classes might be a little um, nerve wracking to some or you're wondering how it'll work, but we'll make sure you're all set up, ready to go. We'll drop off or have you pick up your art kit so you'll have all your supplies ready. You know, so feel free, you know, don't worry about signing up. I promise we'll, we'll work through it together, okay? Uh, so we have summer art camps with Mary Starnicky. Those are either themed weeks like Pirate Week or Zoo Week or Wizard Week, or she's doing more specific techniques such as Drawing Week or Painting Week. So check those out. Um, Alexis is doing a wreath class that is completely virtual. Happy World Day. Thanks, Joanne. A World Bee Day. Yes, the bees. Celebrate the bees. I've seen a lot of bees out in our yard specifically, so that's really awesome. Um, celebrate the bees, right? And celebrate our flowers for the bees. Um, so yes, yeah, so we have Alexis uh, teaching a virtual be creative. Thanks, Joanne. We're having Alexis teach a virtual wreath class June 3rd. Again, we'll have a pickup of your supplies. She has everything set to go for you, and then we'll be on a Zoom meeting. So she'll be live with you and whoever else is in the class. You can ask questions. She can see you. You can see her, and we'll work through that all together. I'm really excited. The wreaths she makes are beautiful. Um, I'll also be teaching a choreography camp for grades three through six and then seven through ten this summer along with our Mill Street Live programming. Uh, this summer Mill Street's going to look a little bit different but we'll make that announcement soon. Um, yeah, so that's what we've got going on. Our gallery is open. Um, we're limiting to five people. Our gift shop is also open. So if you're looking for a place to go to get out a little bit, you know, feel free. Uh, we ask that you wear a mask. We have hand sanitizing stations. We're following all the guidelines, um, but we are limiting it to five people. So um, don't grab all your friends and come in a group of 15 because not everybody will be able to come in at the same time. But we do hope that you come see our gallery. It's beautiful. You know, I walk through it and it just, it amazes me how creative people are and how lucky we are to display that beautiful art. So, okay, with that, uh, let's get started today. So our first step when making pressed flower art or crafts 
is picking the right flowers and making sure they get pressed appropriately um, so you're able to make things with them. So what you're going to do first is grab all the materials that you might need because once you pick the flower, you're going to want to press them pretty quickly so they don't dry out or brown or things like that before you press them. So I would suggest having um, wax paper or parchment paper on hand for the pressing. You're also going to want to use some sort of like heavy book, um, maybe reams of paper, if you have a home office, something like that. Um, any sort of like heavy, like cookbooks, I would probably use to stack on top. Um, and you're going to want to arrange your flowers. Let me grab, we'll use these. So you're cutting out, you'll cut out a, um, piece of like parchment paper or wax paper, you'll lay it out and then you'll arrange your flowers on that piece folded over on top. And by folding it and making something um, that is like holding the flowers, you're gonna protect your books or whatever you're putting on top of them. You know, if you put these just between pages of a book, that's what I used to do when I was little, you're gonna have bleeding from the flower. So you'll have purples, greens, other kind of flower juices that are bleeding into the pages. So you really wanna make sure, um, depending on the books that you're using or what you're using, that you kind of enclose those flowers and make sure that their flower juices, if you will, don't spread and get on everything. So I'll show you here. Now these are already pressed, okay? But you can see how I'm laying them out. You'll wanna decide if the flower is going to have a fanned look, for example. So this one's kind of a side view. This one, before I pressed it, I made sure the petals were open and the center was open. I don't know if you can see that, there you go. And then um, this one, I kept the stem on. This one, I did a little bit of a fanning out of the different, oh, there we go, different petals. So you really can decide um, the type of look that you're going for. Um, when you're hunting for flowers and things like that, you don't have to pick flowers necessarily from your garden. You could, I found a lot of these little guys like within the grass or um, my in-laws have apple trees. So a few of these are apple blossoms, for example. And you wanna be careful when you pick them too. You don't wanna like pick them all off one branch because it is giving that branch life and sustenance. Um, so you, I would like do some like random picking from different trees, for example, or bushes, things like that. Um, but yeah, like these little violets you can find in the grass. Um, these little white flowers came from came from a bush. So have fun. Get your kids. If you're using your kids in this activity, you know, you want something for them to do. He was picking dandelions. I did not press any dandelions, but um, it was great for us to get outside and get some a nice walk in and be exploring a little bit in that regard. Okay, so you lay out your flowers, right, to press them. You cover them, make sure they're enclosed in something. Put the heavy books on top of them. Now these flowers, I've only pressed, whoopsie, uh-oh. Uh-oh, we're back. Okay, got too excited this morning. Here we are. I only press these ones for about 24 hours. Um, I would suggest like three to four days to help them dry out, okay? Um, you'll notice when I'm pressing the wax paper that there'll be a little bit of bubbling around it. That's because there's moisture in there. So in order to get rid of that moisture, you're going to want to um, press them and um, keep them underneath um, those heavy materials for a couple of days. You can check them to see how they're doing, but again, you don't want them super wet or super fresh. Okay, so put our books on top, we press them. A couple days later, we're ready to create our lumineer or any other sort of um, art. You could put these, you could glue them, you could put them on some sort of cardstock, you could frame them in a bouquet arrangement. That would be really pretty. I also saw um, an example where they used watercolor paper. So if you have watercolor paper at home, um, or if you buy one of our art kits, forgot to mention that, we're selling art kits for painting. Um, check out our Facebook page and look to see what all comes in those kits. It's nice that you don't have to run out and buy all the different pieces yourself. Plus, finding paint in store is really hard right now, I discovered. So, <laughs> fine, look at our, uh, our Facebook page and see about our art kits. We've got a standard and we've got a deluxe. And in those kits is watercolor paper. You could also take watercolor paper Take your flowers that you pick, arrange them in a bouquet, cover that with wax paper, take a hammer, pound it out, peel off the flowers really gently, and you'll have the color from the flowers in that bouquet design. So that's something else that you could do. But I'm not demonstrating that today because I don't have watercolor paper. But 
try it out, let me know how it goes. So magically, three days, four days later, my flowers are pressed and dry. I'm going to um, get started and show you guys how to make the lumineer. So when you are making your lumineer, you wanna make sure this time that you have specifically wax paper. I know a lot of people have parchment paper and wax paper or just one or the other. Wax paper is really what you're gonna want for this activity because it'll seal better, okay? Um, when you're making your lumineer, you wanna decide the size of it. So this size is, we're gonna make um, five by five panels. So you can see here, this is a finished panel. Okay, I have another one. I like this one a lot with the purple flowers. So what you wanna do is you're gonna cut a strip of wax paper that's 10 inches by five inches if you're gonna do the five by five with me, okay? And that's because we fold that in half and that creates the five by five. So if you want a different size, you know what I mean? You can play around with sizes after you make one and kind of get the hang of that. Um, maybe you want one that's really tall. Maybe you want one that's really fat and short. You know, you can kind of play with that size and be creative in that way. So. We're cutting our paper, you're going to need four panels. So you're gonna want four strips of the 10 by five um, size. While you're cutting your wax paper, I also suggest turning on your iron. So you can see back there, I have Lori's iron on. Uh, we set it to medium because you don't want it too hot. You don't want the, uh, the wax to melt out. Um, but if it's not hot enough, it's not gonna help seal that wax together, okay? The next step that you wanna do I'm gonna move my flowers here. I have my 10 by five. You're gonna to wanna to fold that in half and try your best to match up the sides and get a really solid crease in that, okay? Really, really solid crease. If your sides aren't perfect, that's okay. We can trim them before we paste them all together. Um, but you really wanna to try to keep it as square as possible because that'll help it stand when we put the cube together. Okay, so I've cut my wax paper, folded it. I have my five by five. I'm gonna open it back up, okay? And I'm gonna pick the side or the bottom, I would say, of the paper to arrange my pressed flowers. Now you can do, um, you can gather enough supplies to make each frame the same, but I kinda like different looking frames for different sides. So I've been playing around a little bit with the design of my frames. Again, this uh, apple tree blossom that I did, I made it so it looked like a full blossom spread out. Whereas this one I got off of a bush in the backyard. Whoops, here we go. I did a side view for this one, so I had it press. So the middle was inside and it looks a little bit more like a fan. Um, with these little flowers, I pulled them off one by one. So you just have the flower. Um, as compared to this one where I left the stem on, you can see this too. Oh, they're so delicate, okay. I left the stem on so then it's more of a fan. I don't know if you can see that better. It's got a fan appeal, but they're all attached. So when you're arranging your flowers, I would say the crease is going to be the top of our luminary because it's the strongest edge. So the top of our luminary is going to be where we fold the paper in half that crease and we'll connect it to the sides and then you'll have the bottom, okay? So think about that when you're laying out your flowers, wherever the crease is, is the top of your panel. Okay, so you can see here, um, I have some fans, I have some stems. This one, I did more of a arrangement in the middle with just a few flowers on the outside. Um, this one here is gonna be more of a mixed bag. So again, when you're designing, think about your design aesthetic. Think about color choices. There's a lot of pinks, purples, blues out there, blue hues, I should say, um, and a lot of white too. So again, kind of think about your color scheme. Think about how you wanna make things work, if you want them all even or if you want them different. Okay, so once we've laid out, you can see here, I've laid out my flowers into a design. Okay, knowing that this, where the crease is, is the top. Then I'm gonna head over to the ironing board. I'm gonna bring you along with me here. Okay, I folded up my paper to keep it nice and easy. You can see I have a, another, um, another panel here that I'm going to press. 
Now, because my flowers are still wet, you'll notice some bubbling happening. Um, and that I think is just pretty normal because there's that moisture in there. Um, but I am gonna start towards the center and then press outward. Okay, so center, press outward with the iron. And that way, oh, I'm gonna need two hands for this, hang on. Boop. Okay, well you can see right away. When I put the iron down on it, you can see that it's already pressing together that wax paper. It gives it more of a translucent look so you can see through it, okay? Um, let me see how I wanna do this. I'm gonna set you guys up over here so you can see the ironing board a little bit better. Just wanna make sure my phone doesn't topple over again. Okay, there we go. I think we're good. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, so I have my iron. Again, I'm pressing in the middle and then I'm gonna press and drag to the outside trying to get rid of as many of the bubbles and moving that air out as I work. Okay, I'm gonna do about half at a time or a quarter at a time. Again, just to work on pressing out those bubbles. Now your um, edges might adjust during this time. So if you think about it, right, our pressed flowers aren't going to be completely flat. There might be some bumpies, again, depending on how long you let them dry as well. Um, so that's going to adjust our edges, but don't worry. We'll trim them. We'll try to square them up as best as we can um, So we get not like a teeter-totter version of our luminary Okay, so I'm just gonna press it again You don't want to leave it on too long because you don't want the flowers to burn. You don't want the wax to melt um, Things like that. Okay, and then you can see We are together nice and flat. I'm gonna do this other one here really quick and then I'm going to show you guys how to put it together. Again, nice and gentle at first. Pressing, trying to get those bubbles out. Make sure your steam isn't on your iron. I know some settings like naturally go to the steam version. You want to make sure, again, that it's dry. Dry heat is what you want. If you're noticing your iron is wet too, you could take a cloth, okay? Or if it's a little hot, um, depending on the type of iron that you have. And you can always use a cloth to protect it from the water. The hard part is you can't quite see what you're doing underneath. So it's more of a feel, okay? So I'm gonna just finish this one up here. I'm having a trouble with one of my sides and sealing. And there might be a little trial and error depending on your iron and how it performs. I have dropped my iron several times, which is super dangerous. I definitely need a new iron. I think I chipped it. But I also, besides Mill Street and all those costumes, I don't typically iron a lot during the year. Okay, I'm gonna call that done. All right, so here are my final two panels. Okay, so let's come on back. We're going to work on putting them together. Thanks everybody again for watching and hanging out with me on Wednesdays. It's been fun. Oops, getting to learn some new things and uh, getting to hang out with all of you in a way. Okay, here we are. We have our panels. We wanna make sure that our edges are pretty square. So what I'm gonna do is just give it a little test run, finding my top edge on all the sides, okay? And see, and kind of laying it out in that square shape here. This might be a good idea just to have a buddy help you um, or if you have children at home that are helping you, everybody take a side and hold it and kind of give it a little test run. Okay, so you can kind of see here I'm holding it up. I'm arranging deciding which panel is going to go where and I'm going to make that plan. What I'm going to do next is lay out my panels side by side on the table. Okay making sure the top edges are all together, making sure I know which side I want out. The side that I want out, I'm going to lay towards my face, okay? So the side that I want facing the world, I'm gonna to put up towards my face because we're gonna to tape those seams on the outside of the luminary, okay? So I'm going to, I don't know if you guys can see, I've lined up my panels and I'm gonna make them touch, okay? Keeping them as straight as can be. Okay, and then I'm gonna tape each of the seams. I'm gonna bring you guys a little closer here. There we go. 
Okay, I think you guys can see that. I'm just using clear, like, scotch tape. If you have um, washi tape, that you could use too. You could use, like, a, a colorful tape if you wanted to, depending, again, on the look that you're going for. Well, this one is being a little tricky here. Let me try this one. I never know how to find the start of the tape. If you're with me on that, I'm always trying to feel my way to find that start of the tape. Okay, here we go. Let me get it together here. Thanks for your patience, guys. Oh, I have this light. I should use that. I can see. Okay, I'm going back to the other one. I had more luck with this one. Let's see. Do, do, do. What you want is really even tape. So my tape is splitting. I'll like share with you my problem solving. I'm doing my tape is splitting as I'm pulling it. So I'm trying to get just a, a new edge to start. That's all the way over so I can have a nice corner made but it's not for whatever reason it is not liking me today oh okay here we go and I'm back here we go I got the tape got the tape even so we should be good to go here okay so now that I've got my even tape I'm going to measure it out again it's going to be that five inches if you want to you could make it a little bit longer we can trim it which is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna kind of just tape it to the workspace here. So I have my tape, it's a little bit longer than it needs to be. And I really wanna make sure that I put these edges evenly together. Okay, here we go. So I taped down a little bit above um, the start, like the top of the panel. And I'm gonna just tape it down to keep it in place. And when I'm ready to put it all together and to fold my corners, um, I can lift it and then uh, trim those edges. Okay, so that's one panel is taped together. I'm gonna do that with the other three here. Here we go, uh-oh. Oh no, tape. All right, we're back. This is bringing me back like wrapping, <laughs> Christmas wrapping horrors when you get everything perfectly aligned and then all of a sudden you can't get to the tape. We've all been there. Okay, here's my next one. I'm going to line it up. Okay. And I'm going to make the tape a little longer than it needs to be so I can lay it and adjust as I go. And I'll just trim that tape at the end. and even okay final panel you guys can't quite see here we go maybe that's a little easier final panel straight let's try again Oop, and there go my glasses that would probably help me see a little bit better anyway here we go okay nice and even lay it down Oop, snuck out the best part about transparent tape is it comes off of the wax paper pretty easily if you make a mistake just try again all right and down they go beautiful okay so now I've effectively taped my Lumineer mostly together and to the table. So I'm gonna peel that off the table. Carefully not to move my panels. I'm gonna do, um, since it's going to the inside, I'm gonna tuck the edges of my tape just down around the inside here. And that'll help reaffirm that corner. Okay. It's 
going to the inside, which won't be seen either. Right down the middle. I'm going to pull these up. Okay. And we'll fold those tape pieces in towards the middle. I think these are really cute as um, gifts too. So if you're looking for something to give as a gift, this would be fun to make as well. All right, so I have my full line here of our luminary panels. Then in towards the middle, I'm going to fold that taped edge, okay? So I'm gonna put a nice crease in that taped edge to give me the corners of the luminary. Again, you wanna be careful to fold evenly. So that's one. Here's my second seam, if you will. That's two, nice even fold. And then I have one more here, three. Okay, the last step, this is probably the trickiest part, is taping our final seam together. Okay, um, so you can see how by folding those corners, um, after taping them, they are, it's much sturdier, right? It'll stand really well. Okay, so I'm gonna prepare my tape before I set this up. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna start again at the top, leaving a little um, to hang over. And I might just tape one side like this and then match up the other side, okay? I don't know if you guys can see me. So I just put the tape on one side. I'm gonna match up the other side at this point. And then tape it like that because again, I can reinforce that seam. Okay. A little bit trickier. And then I'll reinforce by folding that seam down, tucking that top piece in. Okay, there you go. And then, as long as we folded our corners really tight, we've tried to keep our edges nice and square, you have your luminary. Ta-da! Look at how cute that is. You can choose, you can put it by the window. Um, I'll set it up here on the, so you can see, like when the natural light hits it, um, it shines through. You can see the colors. You could also choose to put um, a, like a tea light, a battery operated tea light in the middle of it. Maybe take it outside and have it glow so the light's coming from within. Okay. Thank you everybody for joining me this week. Uh, next week we'll be back at 10 a.m. live on Facebook. Check out our page. Check out to see what we've got going on. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, thoughts, let me know. We always have that form too if you're interested in filling it out, letting me know how I did, giving me suggestions on how to make it better, any sort of feedback I love and um, I'm here for you guys. So have a great week, be well, stay dry and enjoy the sunshine. Thank you.